You should say this. I decree and I declare that all provisional miracles are now working towards my life, my path. My path is filled with the abundance of God. I receive and I walk in life and life more abundantly. The Lord is satisfying my mouth with good things. The Lord is satisfying my mouth with good things. I receive the provisional plan of God for my life, how provision is supposed to come to me. Now I praise you, Lord, and I walk through doors of finances and provision right now. I walk through doors of favor right now. I walk through doors of increase right now. And I thank you for the blessing overtaking my life. Lord, I receive and I pray for a sowing anointing. And Lord, I receive and I pray for a reaping anointing. I pray for wisdom in my works, my words, and my ways. I pray for wisdom in my works, my words, and my ways. And I thank you for it. And I praise you for it. I decree and I declare all the prosperity plan of God is manifesting in my life right now because I receive divine grace to have faith in my prophet. I receive grace to believe my prophet. I receive grace to believe my prophet. And I take in the prophet's reward. I take in prosperity and I take in prosperous manifest manifestations of the goodness of God right now. I decree all money is loosed in my life from the north, south, east, and west. I loose finances to flow in my direction. I loose finances to manifest for me. I decree and I declare there's provisional miracles today in my life manifesting. The minister of finances is moving in my life. And every seed that I have sown is coming back to me a hundredfold. I received a thousandfold, a thousand times more. Deuteronomy 111. Every seed that I've sown is coming back to me in harvests that will bring me great joy. Jesus asked his disciples, ask what you will, that your joy may be full. Well, I received the fullness of joy because I am a disciple of Jesus. I received the Lord giving me the fullness of joy because I'm a disciple of Jesus. Because I am a disciple of Jesus, I decree right now that my joy is full. My joy is full. My joy is full. I decree right now that my gates are open continually. They shall not be shut day nor night. Men are bringing unto me the wealth of the Gentiles. The Lord, Lord, you can't lie. It's impossible for you to tell falsehood. You're not fraudulent. You're not deceptive. You came to break deception. So there's no fear or worry in what you have promised. You said that as long as the earth remains, there's seed time and harvest. And as I choose to be a seed sower, a cheerful giver into you, Lord, I thank you that you are the richest, the most wealthiest being that exists. You created wealth and riches. And now I take a hold of all of your benefits loading me up right now. I take a hold of your benefits. I take a hold of your benefits loading me up right now. Right now, I take a hold of your benefits loading me up today. Today, I am filled with the benefits of God. Now, I receive my healing in my body right now in Jesus' name. Every part of my body is saturated by the glory of God and power of God. 
and healing is flowing through my blood, my body. My blood is cleansed. My body is healed, made whole. My bones are made whole. In the name of Jesus, Jesus healed all the sick that came to him. He healed all those with diseases. Well, Jesus is with me. He's in me. And I receive my healing. I receive healing from sickness and diseases. Saints, I don't say this um, loosely, but I, I, I've been around people before and they're sick and I don't get sick. I've been around people before and they're coughing, hawk, 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 and I don't get sick because I refuse sickness. I choose to walk in divine health. And when I have chosen divine health, I, I will not receive anything opposite to what I've chosen. My dominion is going to stand. My decree is going to stand. The Lord is not a respecter of persons. If you work his system, he'll make you rich. If you work his system, he'll make you plenteous. He'll increase you. He'll bless you. He's not a respecter of persons. He don't look at age, background, or any of those things. The Lord don't look at any of the things that you think about according to the natural. All he watches is your decisions to obey his word. That's all he watches. And he rewards you accordingly. Let's read this here right here, Matthew chapter uh, 16, 27. Matthew 16, 27 says, For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels. And then he shall reward every man according to his works. Wow. He shall reward every man according to his works. Now, another uh, version says, then he will give to each according to his deeds. In another text, it says, then he will repay each one according to what he has done. See? See, God not a respected person. He just responding to you how you respond to what he, how you respond to him. That's how, that's how it works. Romans 2, 6 says, God will repay each person according to what they have done. Romans 2, 6 says, who will re render to every man according to his deeds. Wow. That's deep. That's deep. Here, here you see the word of God saying, all God does is respond to you according to what you have done. That's all God does. So he's not looking at no naturality. He's just looking at your deeds. Hear the word of God saying that he look at your deeds. He rewards every man according to what he has done. So all God is doing is rewarding you according to what you do. When a person is operating in that sowing anointing, the father causes you to become just like him in your city. Wherever you live, you become God moving in that city. See, a lot of people look at Abram's life, but everywhere Abram went, he was God moving in that region. So every time he went there, wealth transference is taking place provisional partners taking place. Now, saints, um, a lot of you all never heard this before, and I never heard this before. Abraham produced financial partners because he sold into his God. 
he produced financial partners because he sold into his God. So all Abraham did was so, and he ended up producing financial partners. As he sold, he produced financial partners in his own life. He started the genesis of investors, the beginning of financial partners and clients. The seed was carrying his clientele, his entrepreneurship. There's a business blessing in sowing. The seed is how God breaks Satan's hands off of your provisional results. He breaks Satan's hands off of your provisional results and you decapitate the thief and his strategies to hold back your wealth. You decapitate the thief and his strategies to hinder you from receiving much. The thief has one anointing that he banks on and it's called fear. Satanic fear is a satanic anointing. There's one anointing that the thief banks on, and it is the anointing of fear. Satanic anointing of fear. Now, this fear is in the realm of powers. Remember, Apostle Paul gave different classification of demons, and he said, uh, principalities, powers. Well, fear is in the powers bracket. Let me show you. Now you understand why Apostle Paul was telling Timothy in 1 7. I think that's 2 Timothy 1 7, but it's in Timothy chapter 1, I believe, verse 7. He was telling him, God has not given you the spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. Now, why did the word of God say that he has given you the spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind? Why did it say the spirit of power? Because fear is in the powers bracket in the satanic. So in the satanic, fear is in that bracket to hold people back. So when, when people are, are, are in fear, satanic fear, they're underneath powers. And see, this is adversarial. It comes to combat the power of God. And in the power, the spirit of power, it's all the different classifications of God's power. The power to heal, the power to deliver, the power to set free, the power to make wise, the power to promote, the power to be humble, the power to be faithful, the power to be consistent, power to be focused, the power to get wealth. So imagine how many times Satan declassifies someone's ability to move in the power of God by moving the power of fear in their direction. And when fear enters their direction, they now resist the word of the Lord. Fear produces resistance to the word of the Lord. Fear produces Rejection of God's ability to take care of you. Fear actually convinces someone that they must remain in imperfection. So even if somebody say, I'm not going to do everything right, that's someone that fears perfection. They fear that that's not possible. They have fear in it, not faith in it. See, faith in it moves you into the ability. Fear of it moves you out of the ability. You notice what was the children of Israel telling Moses? You have brought us out here to die. Fear. So fear was governing their disrespectful words. Fear brought them out of the ability to sow into Moses. Fear brought them out of the creative thoughts to serve Moses. Fear brought them out of the creativity to bring pleasure to Moses. 
because the fear was governing their disrespect, their animosity, their hostility, their disagreement, their competition. When Korah rose up, Korah rose up governed by that power of fear. Remember what he was trying to tell the people? God not telling him to tell us this. And Moses said, if, if it wasn't God, then watch, you're going to die a notable death. You're going to die a recognizable, uh, 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 awful death. In which he did die off of death. The ground opened up and swallowed all that was with him. If you look at it, it's fear. Seed sowing is the power of God confronting the powers of fear. Fear is how Satan built Satan's kingdom off of the mastery of fear. When you fear, your brain shuts down of the solutions of God. My, my. When you fear, your brain shuts down of the solutions of God. You're not thinking about God's solutions no more. You're thinking about saving your life. And remember what Jesus said, if you save your life, you'll lose your life. But if you lose your life, if you overcome fear, you'll find it in me. So losing your life is really overcoming fear. Many people don't sow because they are slaves of the demon of fear. Fear is a fallen angel that Satan convinced from being an angel of faith to be converted to being a demon of fear. The demon of fear today used to be an angel of faith in eternity. But this angel of faith was deceived and chose to boldly follow Lucifer. Now the ministry of the angel of faith is now the demon of fear. So there are information that the demon of fear has from when it used to be an angel of faith. The demon of fear knows how to get you out of faith because the, the demon of fear used to be an angel of faith. And so his whole ministry was to move in all of the philosophy of faith, the operation of faith, the information of faith. So the demon of fear knows that faith worketh by what you hear and also by what you see too in the physical. If you see somebody getting healed in their body, now your faith will rise up. Okay, I might be next. You see somebody getting blessed. Okay, God blessing folk and they in the same bracket as me. We around each other. God, we in the same ministry. God might be. So there's a visuality to this. That's correct. So the demon of fear works through visuals mainly visuals, mainly visuals. Because if the demon of fear knows that you're hearing the word of God, the demon of fear knows that your faith is alive. So the only way to create a little inch of double-mindedness is through visuality, through visuals. So the demon of fear mostly moves through visuality. You notice somebody can go to the doctor, doctor could give them a bad report, but then they take you on the scan and they show, they say, here, your test results came back. Now they're dealing with visuality. So, so even the news is bad, the news is bad, but the visual of it is now, is, is a more of a plunge. It's a dagger with the visual. Now, if you look at the story of Matthew chapter 25, God gave one five talents, one two talents, and one one talent. The person that didn't sow the one was governed by fear. Everybody else was free from fear, so they were sowing. The one that was governed by fear was not sowing and ultimately lost his soul. The Bible says in verse 30, it says, cast this unprofitable servant out into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. 
Cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. This is what Jesus taught in the Gospels. Never let somebody tell you that Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John is not the Gospels. That's bad doctrine. That's bad doctrine. The Gospels didn't start with Apostle Paul. The, the Gospels didn't start with Peter. The Gospels started when Jesus came to the earth in Matthew. He is the beginning of the gospel. As a matter of fact, let me say it like this. John the Baptist was preaching the gospel. Repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. But Jesus is the manifestation of the physical gospel carrier. Even John said, there's one coming, one mightier than I. Sometimes people tend to try to get so deep that they start talking stupid. Never let somebody tell you, you know, Jesus, he didn't really do the gospel. The gospel started in Romans, in Rome and Corinthians. All these people needed Jesus. Ain't no way that the gospel could ever have gotten to them. Apostle Paul said that that which I preach unto you is by the revelation of Jesus. So all that he's teaching, Jesus revealed it to him. Jesus is the gospel. Here's Jesus teaching the gospel in the New Testament and said, cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. This scripture is very, it's full of terror. Because here Jesus telling a parable, this man chose not to sow with his life and then the grim reaper came to get him. This is another angle of sowing that I don't care to play with. I don't want to experiment and find this out. Well, let me see if that's going to happen to me. No. I'm not stupid. Hell is full of stupid people. <laughs> the qualification for hell is not just sin. It's being stupid. It will be more hellish for me to live around stupid people. I heard Dr. Murdoch say that years ago. It'll be more hellish for me to live around stupid people than the fire in itself. The fire is going to be tormenting. But just to know I'm, I'm in a fire full of stupid people. Imagine that. You had knowledge and you around stupid people. And you actually know certain things. You're like, oh, look at the demon of lust here. Look at the demon of fear. Look at the demon of worry. And you down there and they laughing at you. <laughs> An ugly being that ain't got no beauty to it. Deceive you out of your soul, your inheritance, your blessing. The Bible said, cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. I truly believe non-sowers will go to hell. According to this word, if you believe the word of God, here the word of God is clearly saying that a non-sower will go to hell. Jesus told this parable that the man had one talent, he dug it in the ground, and then when he confronted this man, he told him, all right, what, you, didn't so, you didn't so? Go get this one and cast him into outer darkness. That's scary. So you see an area of the sowing anointing where God judges the heart of man. Sowing is a judgment from God towards your soul. And God is looking at your soul to see what do you prioritize in this life, me or thee or thine? And when I say thine, I mean what you possess, your plans, your schedules. According to this text, a non-sower will burn in the lake of fire. It says, there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. It says, cash ye this unprofitable servant. Now, also in this text, I want you to look at the business nature of God. God called this non-sower an unprofitable servant, meaning I'm not getting no profit out of you. 
You're not blessing me. You're not increasing me. You're not giving me no money. You're not giving me nothing. You're unprofitable to me. Wow. Whoa. Man, this this heavy. Matthew chapter 25. Look at what the Lord said to the other ones. Let's go what, what it says right here. In verse 20, it says, So he that had received five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, thou deliverest unto me five talents. Now you notice what he said, thou deliverest unto me. Look at the word choice that he chose, deliverest. He used the word deliver. So when God gave him the seed, the seed was a delivery with deliverance. Oh, this high. Says I, I, you know, I, I, I got so much knowledge, but when I, when I'm talking about this, this is the highest teachings I, I, I give. This is the highest teaching. I know, I know some of y'all like. This is my highest teaching. And see, because of some of y'all done became so possessed with the true worship anointing, you actually love these teachings now. When I'm talking about the seed, the power and glory of God, go to another degree. Because the seed ain't got nothing to do with you. It got everything to do with God experiencing you. So, so the seed message make the Holy Ghost happy because it's a message of unselfishness where your life becomes a worship instrument where God is listening to the music of your offering. He's listening to the music of your honor. Look what it says right here. In verse 20, it says, thou deliverest unto me five talents, but I have gained. That go in alignment with the wisdom though I gave you earlier. I said that when you're sowing, you're not losing, you're not sowing to lose, you're sowing to gain. Look. The word of God said, behold, I have gained beside them five talents more. Look, the person increasing, not because they so educated, not because they know 50,000 people. They're increasing because they are sowing. You know how I started all of this off? Praying for a thousand dollar seed before I was teaching to you. Praying for a thousand dollar seed. That's how I started all of this off. Praying for a thousand dollar seed. Asking God, give me a thousand so I could sow. The common man is always begging God for money because they're a thief. There is only a rare amount of men that go to God and say, give me money so I could give you money. There's a whole multitude of people that say, give me money so I can have money. There are people that say, give me money so I can sow money to you, Lord. Look at this. It says, I, man, I received the power of God to sow and unlock my destiny, Lord. I receive your glory and your wisdom to sow and unlock my destiny. Father, I receive a fresh sowing and reaping mantle on my life. I will not just sow, Lord, I'm a reap because you the Lord of the harvest and you making me a Lord of the harvest. And I'm a walk in the harvest power, talking and decreeing and praising you and serving you and giving you my undivided attention. And you gonna bless me. You gonna bless me. You gonna bless me because I'm a walk in your ways. 
I'm going to be in front of your face all the time, praising you, thanking you, giving you glory. And if I happen to do something you don't like, I'm going to be still enough to know that I did something that you don't like and I'm going to get it right. I ain't going to keep on struggling with it. I'm going to get it right because I'm going to listen for your voice and you're going to speak to me because you made me to hear you. You made me to hear your voice. I ain't got to beg you for your voice to become clear. You made me to hear your voice. So I gladly receive grace to hear you all the time, giving me your wisdom and your counsel and your knowledge and the best decision I should make. You gonna help me at my workplace. You go, you've been helping me at my workplace. You gonna help me at my job. You gonna show me how not to get fired. You gonna show me how to be like Joseph was to Potiphar. My company gonna recognize that they need me. They're going to promote me. They're going to bless me. Everywhere I go, I'm going to get blessed. You know, Carrie been in my ministry for years. Carrie is a phenomenal sower. Carrie get all type of spontaneous money coming to her from various directions. People want to be nice to her all the time where she is. But she's very nice to me. She takes care of me, meaning that she cares about me and she takes that care and she acts on it. That's what means take care. She takes care, meaning that the care is there, but she takes it. Many people, they got the care, but they be like, no. Like some of y'all, some of y'all watch me, but you don't take care of me. But I take care of you. You watch me for inspiration. You watch me for joy. But you don't produce none of my joy. Because you're a thief. You could change that, but you're a thief. Ain't nothing going to go right for you when you mishandle God. Ain't nothing going to go right. When you handle God correct, things go right for you. I just bought some brand new shirts for Dr. Mike Murdoch. Just brought some brand new clothes for him. When you're filled with honor, you possess with ideas. You are continual blessing to who is blessing you. Look what happened right here. Never lie to a man of God about a seed you're going to sow. Don't tell a man of God that you're going to sow into him and then you don't sow. You curse your future if you lie to a man of God about sowing. That's one thing you never want to do. You never want to say, hey, I'm a soul, and then you don't sow. Because the Bible said, pay your vows. Don't make a vow. And then don't pay it. Look what the word says right here. In verse 20, it says, I've gained two more, five more. Look at verse 21. His Lord said unto him, well done, thy good and faithful servant. So we hear, well done, thy good and faithful servant. We are acquainted to eternal life. But here the Bible is talking about this term is being spoken to someone that's sowing. So, so how many times have you heard people say, I just want to hear him say, well done. But look at where the whole declaration of well done was found. In a sowing assignment. The Bible says that these are sowers with the money that God gave them and they're sowing. And God says as a result, when they came back, increase. He said, well done. Thou good. So, so when you're a sower, God declares you good. Faithful. When you are sower, God declares you faithful. So God declared, well done. He declared this person was good. And he declared that they was faithful. And he declared that they were serving him with their seed. Look what the word says. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. 
I will make thee rule over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. And the joy of the Lord is the harvest of the Lord, him answering your petition and granting you what you desire.